Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 7th of September and we're going to do an update video today on Bitcoin. Obviously, we've seen some dramatic price action over the last week or so. We've seen price pull back from 12k down to 10k where we're currently sat. And the big question on everyone's mind is, was 12k a major reversal point in which case we come down much lower from here? Or was it a simple retracement from 12k setting up the next move higher to make the next higher high and a continuation of the uptrend that we are currently in with a series of higher highs and higher lows because of course our previous low has not yet been overcome and so there is every argument that we are still within an uptrend so this is what i really want to break down in today's video essentially i am deeply concerned about the outlook of bitcoin and i'm going to detail my reasoning for that in this video. We're going to largely look at the NASDAQ as well because I believe that a lot of the price action that we're seeing in Bitcoin and, a lot, and across the rest of crypto is largely dependent on the sentiment within stocks. So before we go into Bitcoin, we will be looking at NASDAQ to break that down where again, I am pretty concerned about the health of the stock markets also. All right, so if that sounds interesting, then please stay tuned. Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. All right, so as I say, first thing I really want to talk about is the NASDAQ. So we're just going to pull up the NASDAQ. And um, yeah, another point I really want to make is, um, yeah, I'm quite excited actually. I'm going to be doing a, a quite a different video soon, probably in the next week or so. Uh, and it's basically going to be demonstrating the trading platform that I use. Now, uh, people have asked me, many many times what trading platform i use and i have changed platforms several times in the past trying to find the the best platform and i must say right now i'm very settled on the the trading platform that i use it's taken me a good while to find one that seems to tick all the boxes so i decided to speak with the platform providers and um yeah i've managed to source out an affiliate link with them so um yeah obviously i'm sure you all know how affiliate links work if you use the link i benefit and um, because of that, I actually want to offer you something in return if you do end up clicking that link. And uh, so that's all going to be revealed in this video that will be soon to come where I talk about how to choose a broker, why I chose this particular broker. And I will talk about the offer that I put on display as well for those who do choose to go ahead with you know, trying out the platform. Um, it is a pretty decent offer. It's probably the biggest offer I've done before. So pretty exciting. So do look out for that video if interested. Now, as I say, want to take a look at the NASDAQ here. So zooming out weekly time frame. Don't want to spend too much on it because obviously the video is mainly about Bitcoin. But basically, um, as we know, linear scale, we've just been going up in a rather parabolic fashion. And we're all familiar with this. Yeah, we're literally going vertical. This is the linear scale. We're climbing the wall here we're literally gone vertical yeah so you know it's in moments like these you've got to really ask yourself when are we going to peak when are we going to find a top yeah uh, because there's every reason to once you end up going vertical this is how parabolic moves end you know they go vertical and then you see a, an ab astronomical fall uh, to the downside obviously with the um the u.s election on the horizon third of november you know, there's a lot of reason to suggest that may be a catalyst for an eventual pullback. Um, so uh, I want to take a quick look at this on the log scale. So here's the count that I've been using. So it's a one, two, three, uh, running flat four, five. Yeah. Um, in fact, the linear scale exp displays it a little bit better. And in fact, the fibs were drawn out on here. So you can see it's a one to one relationship between wave one and wave three. OK, so if we just do a fib extension, that's wave one. Extend it here. So wave three, nice one to one extension. And wave four was a running flat. So an A, B, C to here. And then you get your parabolic move wave five really extend, uh, extended here to the upside. Um, if we extend wave one from the bottom of wave five, you can see we've come up to 
pretty close to the 1.618, um, certainly gone past the 1.382. Um, so yeah, 1.618 would have been at 12,600. I think we've come up to around 12.4K here on the NASDAQ. So just shy of it at the moment. But you can see we're certainly very, very extended. And I wanna show you some other fibs that can suggest that the top may already be in. So that's that, that's the major count. This is following our 2008 financial crisis. So the run up from 2009 onwards demonstrates this five way pattern which may have uh, potentially completed. So that's the first point of caution I wanna make. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna zoom in on each of the the latter waves of this count. So if we look at the wave five here, let's zoom in and break that down. So if we go on the daily now, the count that I had for this was a wave one, two, three, four, and then a super extended wave five. So that was a wave one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and again, I've done the count for the fifth wave here. Okay, before we go into that, I wanna show you a few uh, pitchforks that I've been following. So th these are resting on the log scale. If I just pull up the major pitchfork, first of all, let's take off this smaller one. And yeah, this is the major pitchfork that I've been following, following 2009, followed it really, really nicely. You can see we're currently above the upper median line, which is the first time we've been above the upper median line. Slight test of the upper median line back here, but you can see we're really in, we're really in overbought levels right now. So we're on the log scale and we are above the upper median line. Well, we were above the upper median line. You can see we've come back down beneath it now. Yeah, you can see how we came actually quite close to the upper warning line. And now we've, we're just around the upper median line. So will it hold a support? We'll have to wait and see. But as I say, I'm, I'm deeply concerned. And I'll explain why in a moment as we zoom in further on these subwave counts. So that's looking at the major pitchfork. So if we just take that one off for now, and I want to look at the next one. So this is for the fifth wave of this subwave count of the five, the final fifth wave, which is from here to here. Then we're looking at the fifth wave of that move. So this is this one. Uh, so first two, uh, three pivots, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot. This pitchfork's worked pretty well. You can see the upper warning line never really broken here. Slight um, move above the upper warning line. Then we got rejected. Again, lower median line now acting as a bit of support here also. Okay, but in my opinion, I don't think it'll be long before we find ourselves dropping out of this pitchfork, which suggests that this uptrend has probably completed its move and it is about to correct itself. Um, so that's that one. And then, as I say, I want to zoom in a little bit further and look at this final five waves. And here you can see clearly we've broken out of the pitchfork. So if we go on the hourly now, um, what I was looking at is this as a, a one, two, three, four, and again, an extended five. So we keep seeing these extended wave fives, which are very classical within a parabolic move. Um, so there you've got it. Wave one, two, three, four, and five. Using a wave one and two, you draw your pitchfork. This is a um, modified shift pitchfork. And again, um, held price pretty well. And very cleanly, we broke out the lower warning line, little retest of it before it came down further. All right. So this was the first major concern. Now, if we zoom in even further and going on the 15 minute chart, um, so now we can pull on this pitchfork, you can see quite clearly we've had five waves down. We've had a one, two, three, four, and five. Now I do think, uh, and again, you can see the pitchfork's held very well. It's an original pitchfork using the first pivot, second pivot, and third pivot. Pitchfork holding wonderfully well. You can see the lower warning line held here, here and sorry the upper warning line held here and here and then the lower warning line holding as price was very oversold to the downside now i do anticipate potentially a bit of a correction yeah um to the upside yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if we see a bit of a bounce here could allow for a bit of a bounce in crypto also um but no guarantee. Certainly on stocks, I wouldn't be surprised to see a bit of a bounce. Why? Because we've had five waves down and we've broken to the upside of this pitchfork. Yeah. So, <clears throat> yeah, what I'll be looking at is typically probably around a, a 0.5 retracement. So if we do from there to there, classically, fib retracements are besting on the linear scale. Um, so, yeah, you're looking for a move up to at least around 11.8K. Yeah, that's what I'll be looking out for. Um, but certainly could come up a bit higher, the 0.618, obviously a classical level to test uh, around 12K here. Yeah. 
So that's what I'm kind of looking out for. But ultimately this week, I wouldn't be surprised towards the end of the week that we come down again. Um, so these are the concerns I have. NASDAQ having potentially completed its five wave moves to the upside on the macroscopic scale following the 2008 crash. Um, next up, I want to show you some FIB projections that I often use to try and determine where we're likely to find a top. Um, so, best seen on the daily actually, uh, I think on the log scale. Let's take off this smaller pitchfork just a moment. Um, so yeah, FIB projections, what you do, FIB retracement tool, take it from the high to the low as such. You can see we've hit the 1.618 to the T, that was at 12.4K, absolutely hit it perfectly. So that's what I will often look at. The, the last previous pullback, do a FIB retracement of that um, and you'll see you hit the 1.618. The other way of doing that is if you just pull on your FIB extension tool and you extend that retracement and put put it at the top, you again see it's the 1.618 that it hits. That's the other way you can draw these. Yeah, but I also want to show you if we look at it from this major retracement, which was the wave four on the, the lower degree. Let's just make it clear. So if we do a fib retracement from here down to here, 2.618 gets hit to the T. So we've got a nice bit of Fibonacci confluence there at around, around 12.4K. So that's pretty much everything I want to say for NASDAQ. I want to move on to Bitcoin now. So those are the reasons why I am looking out for this as a potential top here at 12.4K in NASDAQ. Certainly possible. It was a strong move down. It was a 10% drop in price if we just take a look. So yeah, there you go. 10.5%. Very strong move to downside, five waves in nature, and plenty of reasons why this could be a wave five top. All right, so that's NASDAQ. Now let's move on to Bitcoin, which, as I say, because of the NASDAQ, I am quite concerned about the health of crypto now. I mean, if um, if NASDAQ does make a recovery, yes, we could see a higher high play out in Bitcoin also. But until that happens, I am quite concerned. So going back to Bitcoin, now let's look at the major uh, play out. So first of all, as you know from my last video, we were talking about a move up to 16K. Sorry, not that high. 16K round here. So I won't go too much into the reasoning for 16K as being a target. Essentially, we're going off an ODV level, the oldest daily block originating from a, a price block around this point here. On top of that, we were looking at FIBs, FIB extensions. Uh, and also using time catalysts, in particular the US election, which is this vertical line here, November 3rd. Um, but ultimately, I was looking at this move up from here, all being corrective. And I certainly stand by that. I felt like 16K was probably the most regular target. Yeah, it's probably the best way, best, the highest bit of price I could see a Bitcoin reaching was around 16.5K. Yeah. But it's done incredibly well to make it to 12k as i say this to me all looks corrective uh, i've mentioned previously how this is corrective although everyone's counting five waves within it i won't go into that in this video again i explained that this is not a wave two because a lot of people are looking at this as a wave one two then this is our third uh, certainly wave twos do not look like this they do not end in these sudden drastic sell-offs you know they begin in a strong sell-off and then you might get another sell-off, but you'll never get a gentle sell-off followed by a really strong sell-off. Um, following that, this is certainly not impulsive. Uh, you're really trying your look, in my opinion, if you're trying to label this as an impulse, because very clearly it's very overlappy, uh, not clean as an impulse at all, uh, looking very, very corrective. Okay. Um, so I had the argument that it was a, a complex correction going up to 16k. We were having a three wave move up to here, the sideways move, and another three waves up. Yeah. However, I did not expect this pullback here. Once we dropped beneath 11.1k, that was an invalidation point for me. Uh, I explained that to the group. 11. Point, you know, beneath 11.1k, uh, I'm going to find it very difficult to go long. Uh, and we shot beneath 11.k with quite in quite emphatic fashion. Um, now, as I say, with the Nasdaq looking pretty um, bleak, as well as 
crypto all looking i you know i cover in cryptology the top 15 market caps and all of them i was saying how they all look like they have completed correction patterns to the upside you ever seen that it was a common theme across the top 15 and um yeah it just shows the power of correlating charts really uh, because if you look at this chart in isolation yes you might say we've got a higher series of higher highs coming in you know until we take out this low here you can argue we're still in an uptrend market structure has not been broken you can say 10k is an amazing resistance or, or support level right now because it's actually incredible resistance here here and here and even going back here it was brilliant resistance here it acted as temporary support and um so yeah it's a very very key level and don't forget i've mentioned 9833 in particular is a very significant level because it's the halfway point between zero and the all-time high at 19666 so that's 9833 that's where we're currently sat around and certainly if you break to the downside of that it's deeply concerning right now you, there's a bit of a lifeline for bitcoin as long as we stay above 10k but for me as I say, I think it's only a matter of time before it breaks beneath 10K and then suddenly you will see a big shift in momentum from bullish to bearish. Um, but at the moment, yes, bulls will still be hopeful. Bulls will still be you know, optimistic of another move up. But as, as I say, for me, all the concerning signals are out there that this is just the start of a major move to the downside where rather than having this WXY like this, uh, I'd be very happy to call that W and X in and this is all part of Y coming down as I say uh, without giving an exact target just yet we're probably looking at around 2k somewhere within this consolidation here certainly see us coming beneath the 3.2k so the only difference from my previous uh, forecast was that rather than us you know getting up to 16k um, it looks like we may just fall short only you know come out uh, reach around 12k which we've done and then collapse from there down to 2k that's the way i'm looking at it right now i've drawn this pitchfork here this is a pitchfork that i've had on for a, a good while since we've had this pivot so it's the first pivot second pivot third pivot shift pitchfork and you only have to look at these lines here so we've got the on this chart you've got the one line which is your upper median line um, we've got the 0 0.5 which is your green line so then you've got your 0 0.75 your 0 0.25 and then your median line yeah and you can see on both sides how the lines are getting hit very nicely hit the 0 0.5 here you can see the 0 0.25 getting hit very nicely and it's no surprise we found resistance quite significant resistance here at the upper median line yeah if we zoom in we were looking at this within the group suggesting it may be some kind of complex correction but as soon as we came beneath this point here you know this level here 11.1k uh, this was my invalidation point because you can see it's almost like a head and shoulders you got your left shoulder head right shoulder this being your neckline as soon as that breaks there's going to be a lot of pattern traders jumping on that short there's no doubt about it so as well as the fact that you've got trend traders short in the upper median line here um, so no surprise it came down in very emphatic fashion um, yeah so Another thing I commonly look at are Camarilla pivots. If we just pull on the daily for Camarilla pivots, uh, just take off all the other annotations. And let's zoom in. So you can see here on the daily, really struggled with the R3 for this period here. That was for the month of August. And then, yeah, because we struggled here, we've come down really sharp. Now we're using the S4 as temporary support at 10.6K and then allowed for the further sell-off very concerning once you get beneath the s4 or above the r4 that generally suggests you're going into a new trend developing um so yeah very concerning here on the daily time frame when the camera camera pivots to see us beneath the s4 and the other thing i want to show you is on the weekly time frame if we zoom in here the weekly camera pivots have been very instrumental in calling the bottom here at 3.2k and also the top here at around 11.4k um, and then as, as you can see we found a bit of resistance um, here at 10k previously shot down to the s3 back to the r3 a little blip above but now we're, we're coming back to this point will it hold that's what we need to see if it does as i say there's a potential move on to 16k still i think it's 
unlikely, as I say, for all the reasons I've mentioned so far. I think we're likely to come beneath it soon, and then you can use the 10K as a level of resistance um, for looking for shorts to the downside. So that's just it looking at from a Camarilla pivot point of view. And then if we just pull on the moving averages around the weekly time frame, green being the 20, blue 50, red 100, black 200, you can see we're currently sat at the 20-week SMA, which may, as I say, offer a bit of support. So you've got reasons for a potential bounce here. You've got the 20-week SMA. You've got 10K being clear horizontal um, support to some extent. Um, yeah, they're the, they're the main things, really. Yeah, you, and you've got your halfway point, 9833, also being a, a very key psychological level. Um but yeah, once that is lost, you're going to see a steep sell off. And for me, looking at the price action on the shorter time frames, if we just take off the moving averages now, um, just bring on our lines. So there was a pitchfork coming down here. If we just quick take a quick look at that one. So you can see we're following an original pitchfork, first pivot, second pivot, third pivot, shot down all the way beneath the lower median line. And I, I wouldn't be surprised for us to come down and test this low warning line very soon, after which you might get a little bit of a bounce at that point. But you can see if we really zoom in on the 15 minute, there's nothing here to suggest, you know, we're, go, we're going to bounce off this level. We've hit the 98. So I said the wrong level. It should be 9833. We've had a bit of a bounce off that point, but nothing here to suggest an impulse, impulsive move to the upside. As I say, I do think once we tag the uh, lower warning line, you might get a bit, a bit of a relief bounce, but it will only be a bounce and I anticipate another move to the downside. So that's the way I'm looking at it. As I say, as long as the NASDAQ continues to look weak um, and impulsive to the downside, I'm certainly still bearish on crypto. Um, so yeah, looks deeply concerning. Um, again, just want to clarify there's nothing impulsive about this move up here nothing impulsive about it yeah um so that's just using simple elliott wave and uh yeah this really needs to hold because once you get beneath that then clearly with there's a loss of market structure you've lost your your higher low basically um so i think that pretty much sums it up you know, if Bitcoin is going to go higher and reach 16K, which is the highest level that I can see it making for before it comes down to 2K, uh, it needs to do it now. Yeah, because it's at a significant level of support. Uh, the fact that it's not shown any significant effort to move higher off 10K makes me deeply concerned that this market just wants to come down further. And as I say, I've pointed out the reasons why the Nasdaq looks pretty weak at the moment also, which would support it coming down further. So yeah, at the moment, uh, I'm only really looking for shorts, uh, not jumping in on any shorts just yet because I'm a more of a short term uh, trader. So I'll wait for a bit of a bounce before looking for shorts. But um, using this pitchfork, this pitchfork is instrumental at the moment. And uh, so yeah, Hope that has been of use. Please, yeah, if you found it of value, then leave a like. Feel free, as always, to post your comments down below. And um, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. So we've got a very key, it's a very key time in Bitcoin here to find out, you know, are we going to hold on to this point and trend higher or is it going to roll over? Because as soon as this is lost, I see it coming down to at least 2K. Yeah, it's going to be a strong move down and an absolutely wonderful time to make money on the shorts. So I'm happy with it going either way. As always, I trade Bitcoin objectively. I'm happy for it to go up or down. At present, I have to say I'm leaning to the bearish side. All right, guys, hope that has been of use. And um, yeah, I think we'll call it a day. All right, guys, take care.